Flywheel resistance training involves the use of rotating flywheel discs or cones to provide resistance. The concentric action is initiated by pulling the strap connected to the shaft of the device, spinning the flywheel. Once the strap rewinds around the shaft, an eccentric action is performed to decelerate the flywheel rotation. To obtain the best training response, the focus should be on the production of near maximal effort during each repetition and on the timing and technique of the braking force in the eccentric action, which allows for near maximal muscle activation and intensity of the workout. Therefore, reliable flywheel training exercise outputs often depend on the user's effort, training experience, moment of inertia selected, and the mechanical characteristics of the devices used. Also, it's important to highlight that despite the eccentric phase often being the focus of flywheel training, not all exercises, users, or training loads achieve eccentric overload. Therefore, it's important to define the resistant training method as flywheel resistance exercise or training, instead of eccentric overload. Recently, Marco Beato and 18 other experts from around the world produced a consensus statement containing guidelines for the implementation of flywheel resistance training technology in sports. This presentation, brought to you by Talk in Sports Science, will be a summary of the seven recommendations put forward in the consensus statement. First of all, recommendation one, monitoring and profiling. When it comes to weightlifting or using weight stacked machines, the maximum repetition achieved with a certain weight is perhaps one of the most common methods used to adjust and prescribe intensity when programming. However, there is no load that represents this concept in flywheel resistance technology. The use of the built-in linear and rotary encoders during flywheel resistance training do allow mechanical variables such as peak and mean power, velocity and force to be calculated and monitored, allowing inertia power, inertia velocity and inertia force curves to be produced. And here's examples of inertia velocity curves for peak concentric and peak eccentric vertical velocity that can be used to individualize training, whereby the moment of inertia can be manipulated to either increase or decrease the mechanical outputs, for example speed and power, depending on the training goals. However, because familiarization and training experience impact the reliability of flywheel training outputs, it's important that individuals undergo familiarization before testing is undertaken and that an adaptation period takes place before monitoring and profiling. Moving on to recommendation two, periodization. Periodization plays a key role in long-term physical development. However, the current literature is not strong enough to provide evidence-based recommendations for periodizing flywheel resistance training. Therefore, its recommended future flywheel resistance training intervention studies should include specific detail around any periodization model and training plan used to help offer insights about the benefits of their use. Moving on to recommendation three, hypertrophy. In males, substantial hypertrophy can be achieved by performing flywheel resistance training two to three times per week over a four to eight week period, where increases of more than 5% have been found in muscle volume, cross-sectional area, and mass. Regarding intensity, moments of inertia greater than 0.05 kg per meter squared are typically used. It's important to highlight that most studies have focused on lower limbs, while research involving flywheel resistance training for developing hypertrophy of the upper body lacks. In females, a large range of moments of inertia ranging from 0.025 to 0.14 kg per meter squared, have been used. However, it seems that higher moments of inertia should be preferred to lower moments of inertia to stimulate muscular hypertrophy. In particular, high loads and slow exercises would help to achieve a greater time under tension, which should favour hypertrophic adaptations. And it's important to highlight that the existence of eccentric overload during the exercise doesn't influence the subsequent increase in muscle mass. Therefore, flywheel resistance training could be prescribed with or without eccentric overload if the main aim is to develop muscular hypertrophy. And it's likely that the absolute demands of the exercise 
is more important than the relative comparison of concentric and eccentric phases. However, clear guidelines regarding intensity, volume and training frequency cannot be put forward, as they'll be dependent on factors such as age, sporting level and previous training experience. Nevertheless, flywheel resistance training can be used as a valid method to develop chronic morphological adaptations in both sporting and healthy male or female populations. In most cases, it's suggested to progressively increase the moment of inertia and volume of exercises to obtain a progressive overload. Moving on to recommendation 4, strength development. Flywheel resistance training is a valid method to develop chronic strength adaptations in both healthy male and female and sporting populations. Furthermore, flywheel resistance training elicits improvements in strength development with different testing methodologies, i.e. isokinetic and isotonic, and muscular contractions, i.e. concentric and eccentric, with the extent of the improvement being related to the initial strength level of the population being trained, whereby strength increases are greater in untrained individuals compared to trained athletes. Specifically, performing flywheel resistance training using a 7 to 10 repetition range for 2 to 4 sets, 2 to 3 times per week over a 4 to 6 week period is sufficient to develop strength. However, the use of specific volumes and intensities should not be too generalised as it should be tailored to the individual's needs and their previous experience with the machines as well as the mechanical characteristics of the devices used. Also, it's been reported that the existence of eccentric overload during exercises can offer advantages for chronic enhancement of muscular force that should be taken into consideration when programming. Moving on to recommendation 5, power development. Flywheel resistance training is a valid method to increase mechanical power and jump performance in both male and females. For male football players, flywheel training protocols consisting of 1-2 to two sessions per week, lasting 6-10 to 10 weeks, involving squats, lateral squats or lunges, can significantly enhance jump performance. While one study intervention with healthy females, consisting of 2 sessions per week, lasting 6 weeks, found large improvements in jump performance. Other studies, consisting of 1-2 to two sessions per week, lasting 6-24 to 24 weeks, did not enhance jump performance with a mixed cohort of athletes. Although evidence supporting the use of flywheel training for female athletes is limited, greater training frequency is likely to enhance mechanical power and jump performance. It should be noted that the evidence reviewed by Marco and colleagues on flywheel training amongst male and female athletes also involved healthy adults, which may therefore inappropriately represent how flywheel training may elicit changes in jump and power performance within elite athletes. Regarding post-activation performance enhancement protocols, the flywheel squat, deadlift, cross-cutting step and lunge has been effectively implemented to acutely improve vertical jump, changes of direction and isokinetic performance in different populations. And depending on the exercise selected, different moments of inertia, for example 0.029 to 0.11 kg per meter squared, using multiple sets, for example 2 to 3 sets, can be used to enhance sport specific performance. Regarding the post activation performance enhancement time window, acute fatigue is dominant in the early part of the recovery period, for example 30 seconds, while potentiation is dominant in the second part, for example after 3 minutes. Therefore, when programming, it suggested a recovery period is planned between the flywheel post activation performance enhancement protocol and the subsequent exercises in order to facilitate transfer effects on athletic performance. On to recommendation 6, braking and accelerating. Flywheel resistance training is a valid method to improve an athlete's ability to perform sport specific braking and accelerating actions. The regular use of flywheel resistance training with an athlete's training program will enhance acceleration, deceleration, sprint and change of direction ability. However, further studies are needed to evaluate the dose-response relationship between flywheel resistance training and sprint performance among sport populations 
that typically adopt a low resistance training frequency per week, for example within football. And lastly, recommendation 7, injury prevention and rehabilitation. Regarding injury prevention, performing 6 to 8 repetitions for 3 to 6 sets for 1 to 2 flywheel resistance exercises twice per week using moments of inertia ranging from 0.05 to 0.145 kg per meter squared has been successful in reducing lower limb injuries in football players. Despite this, the evidence regarding flywheel resistance training, reducing the likelihood of muscular injuries, as well as its use in the rehab setting, is quite limited. Consequently, until this area is further explored, flywheel specific evidence based guidelines are unable to be provided. Nevertheless, for both injury prevention and rehabilitation, as with other resistance training methods, its recommended flywheel resistance training is implemented in a progressive and systematic manner, with mechanical outputs being monitored and different flywheel exercises, for example squats and leg curls, being combined with other training methods, for example traditional resistance training, in order to enhance the injury prevention programs rather than solely riling on one approach. And that concludes the recommendations put forward by Marco Beato and colleagues in their consensus statement regarding the use of flywheel resistance training. As always, I recommend you go and check out the full article. The link is in the description. Thanks for listening, folks. See you next time.